Wouldn't it be great to be able to talk to someone who's been not only involved in some of the most complex arguments in the nation and be able to talk with him about how he was able to take everything he learned from business and apply it to his marriage and be married for 42 years. Well, we have that person today. Amazing. I know. I'm so excited <laughs> to introduce Dan Paget, and he is the uh, author of this book in front of you called Unveiled, and he is also a trial attorney and been married for 42 years. And Stan, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Lauren. It's wonderful to be here. It's wonderful to talk with you. Well, I have been very excited not only to understand more about how to have a, a very long-term successful relationship, but also to learn a little bit more about your relationship match. Academy and there's a there's a secret formula I understand that you will reveal later in this episode. secret no more <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right that's right so first can you tell us a little bit about what got you interested in developing your relationship magic Academy I will I have spent uh, I got married very young mm -hmm. I met my wife about three days after she turned 16 wow. I was 17 Three months later, we were engaged. Oh, wow. So she went to my senior prom with an engagement ring on that she's never taken off. Oh, how cool That's is that? That's beautiful. That's wow. such a great story. Well, the is. best part is that she's my best friend now. Mm. I'd rather be with her than be with be anywhere else. Wow. And what, what do I enjoy doing? Whatever we can do together. Oh, I think that's amazing because as we all know that, you know, when you're in your 20s, so much of the time that's when you are finding yourself and people diverge and be, and different things become important to them so so how have you been able to keep that sustained interest and commitment and love for each other or how did you know when you were 17 yeah, that's like, let's, let's start there the let's beginning. start there okay <laughs> how did it start i we uh we working at burger king strangely enough mm -hmm. i was working now you have to remember in the 1970s that meant that I was wearing a yellow and orange polyester shirt and a yellow and orange paper hat. <laughs> Which is flattering to no one. Isn't it? You're right. She walked in with another guy. She was on a date with him, and one of the guys working there called her by name. I didn't know she worked there also. I hadn't met her yet. And so as soon as she walked away, I grabbed him and I said, I had two hands full of yellow and orange polyester. I said, who is that? <laughs> that was her last date with him and her last date with anybody ever. Oh, wow. Me. And you knew. You knew what I you did. wanted from the minute you saw her. I huh? do, I, guys don't remember this stuff. I know exactly what she was wearing the first time I saw her. Wow. That's and amazing. And it wasn't orange and yellow. It was not. It was not. <laughs> I was so, I'm thinking, why did she go out with me? I don't get it. Mm. You know, I, do you know the answer? Has she ever owned it? She really, ha I don't think I've ever asked her the question. So, but I do remember the first night I took her home from work, we go home and we're sitting on her couch and she falls asleep on my shoulder. Oh. That was her first time. I said, Obviously I did ask her, why did you do that? Mm. She said, because I felt safe. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Okay. That's wonderful. So now 42 years later, you've evolved a whole educational process to teach others and help others yeah. get the same. Yeah, because we, were, we realized we were children when mm -hmm. we got married. Mm -hmm. We were children when we got engaged. We were children when we got married. We've gone through, we had a ch first child while I was in college, second child while I was in law school, third child while I was a very young lawyer working ridiculous hours. Mm -hmm. We've started our own businesses, my own law practice. We've lost two grandsons. We've buried two mm -hmm. grandsons. Sorry. I'm so sorry. And so we've not just, it, it's not all been sunshine and roses. I, truthfully, there were times when I was a jerk. And she was more patient. She was. She grew up faster, and she waited for me. Let me catch up. Hmm. And what I learned between our own marriage and watching other friends, some of them succeed, some of them fail, being in the courtroom, and in church positions that I've held over the years, where I spent an awful lot of time with couples talking about marriage, about relationship issues. There are patterns of problems that you see all the time, and there are patterns of solutions and strong marriages. The problem is that we don't model the ones that are successful. Mm. We just see the ones that fail because the statistics on divorce are miserable. Mm, that's so interesting. So from your experience, 
what is one pattern that maybe not maybe might not be totally like transparent to us of something that you've noticed that successful couples do successful couples understand the difference between the way men and women think and communicate hmm. we are totally different beings John Gray's book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, is great. I read it when I'd been married for 20 years, and I'm literally rolling on the floor going, this is us. <laughs> <laughs> because for 20 years, I'm a, you know, I don't know whether I'm because I'm a lawyer or I'm a lawyer because of, I'm sort of a pretty linear, logical thinker. Mm -hmm. I come home, Linda tells me a problem, I tell her the answer, and she's not happy. Right. Mm -hmm. And I am confused. Right. And so finally I realized, Guy, one of the things a guy can do to win, and really, we all want to win, mm -hmm. shut up. Stay <laughs> awake. That's it. Just listen. Yeah. She wants to be heard. She wants her feelings validated. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't want you to fix her because she's not broken. Mm -hmm. Just hear. And you flip it. Women, men do not get clues. Mm -hmm. We don't get little ones. We don't get huge ones. <laughs> When you need to talk in clues, that's what your girlfriends are for. That's interesting. So if you want to know exactly how to get what, for, what you want from your man, I can tell you. Okay. Let's hear it. Okay. You have to get his undivided attention because he can only think about one thing at a time. Uh -huh. If he's watching TV, reading, reading a magazine, reading on his uh, Kindle, he doesn't hear you. You don't exist because mm -hmm. that's his one thing. That's right. So you have to get his undivided attention. That probably means get way up in his personal space, maybe put both hands on the side of his cheeks, look him right in the eye and say, I want you to take me to this restaurant and I want to go to Baskin Robbins. And he'll go, okay. Because he gets a lot of his satisfaction from your being fulfilled and your being happy. But he doesn't want to guess what you want because he doesn't know. Mm -hmm. And when you make him guess, and he guesses wrong, he says, I'm not going to guess anymore. I, I won't play this game. Mm. So if you recognize the difference and say, look, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to give clues thinking he's going to pick it up. Mm -hmm. He isn't. And he's not ignoring you. He okay. truly doesn't get it. Good to know. That is really funny that you say that because one of my typical things with Jeff is I'll, I'll say something and I'll say, Jeff. I can totally tell, like, even if I'm on the phone, I'm like, Jeff, put your chess game away. Oh, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, okay, put, don't, don't look at your computer right now. I've got to tell you something, you know? And it's funny mm -hmm. because he used to get a little offended when mm -hmm. I would say that because I totally caught him. Mm -hmm. But it's, he, now he just laughs and he's like, okay, I'm, I've got, you got my attention right now, you know? But oh. that's what he needed. You needed that. Uh huh. But in order for him to hear you and respond appropriately, he has to be focused on you. That's right. Because if he's not, He's doing two other things. Now, mm -hmm. Men don't have multiple channels. Mm -hmm. You do. Yeah. I mean, that's why you have children. You have, you're cooking dinner. You may be on the phone on business, and something breaks in the back room. And you go, Susie, stop hitting Bobby. Yeah. He didn't hear any of that. Interesting. ESPN was on. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a little bit of an issue I, there. I, I can totally, totally see it. I totally see that. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, what's another... What's another um, tip for successful marriages. What is another pattern? It's what you focus on. Mm. Do you worry about the toothpaste being left uncapped or the toilet seat being left down? Or do you think about the things that he does right? He's a great husband. He's a great father. Mm. He's a great provider. He's loving. He's faithful. He doesn't, he's not chasing skirts. He's not drinking, smoking, any of mm -hmm. which, are, which are you focused on? So mm -hmm. here's a simple exercise. Take one of the yellow sticky pads, post-it notes. Mm -hmm. Write one for each day one thing that you love or appreciate about your spouse, male or female, both of you should do it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and leave it somewhere he or she will find it that day. Mm -hmm. It could be on their dresser, That's really sweet. in their drawer, in their lunch mm -hmm. pail in the old days, on their computer screen, in the car, doesn't matter. You think about two or three or four weeks of that, how much would you anticipate finding that note? Mm -hmm. And how would that note make you feel? Mm, that's, uh, that's beautiful. I know a lot of people who do that for their children, but I don't know that they think about doing it for their spouse. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think that's, cool. a, that's a really great idea. And it kind of goes back to what we were talking about before, um, before the segment started, about having that abundance mindset mm -hmm. and that gratitude mindset and focusing sure. on the positive. I love that. Well, you also attract what you think about all the time. 
the law of attraction works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you think about the good things, you can all, people will live up or down to your expectations most of the time. So what do you want? Do you want them to live up to your expectations or down to them? Mm -hmm. I love that. You know, speaking of children, I totally do that with my children. I, I tell them what I want them to be. You are such a good, honest person. You are such a smart, hardworking person, and they are. And I just focus when I catch them doing mm -hmm. well or whatever. I do many things wrong as a parent, but I do, I do that that's one thing. thing. But I haven't really ever done that with my husband, so that's a really good idea. However, I, I have done this. One day, Jeff was just driving me bonkers, right? And it kind of went on for a couple weeks, and I was like, oh, he is such a dum-dum. And I was like, all of a sudden I was like, but he's my dum-dum. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, okay, he's mine. I love him for who he is, and I'm just going to like try to just support him and be like... And for me, what that did in my mind was it didn't create that rift and that separation. It made me more determined to be his champion, you know, so... That's one of, one of the things that you can do that will strengthen a relationship is be completely honest all of the time. Mm -hmm. Brutally honest with yourself, mm -hmm. gently honest with your spouse. Mm -hmm. What's the standard answer when a woman says, when a man says, what's wrong, honey? Mm -hmm. What's the normal answer? Nothing. 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 Because you want, you want them to guess. No, but, but it's nothing. But is, is that <laughs> That's true? Right. That's, That's the right. point. It's the tone. That's yeah. Right. It's the tone. Nothing. But is that true? No, mm, it's never. It's not true. It's not true. <laughs> but you see, the basis of love is trust and respect. And every time you tell him something and he knows it's not true, you crack the foundation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you'll lie to him about little things, why should he believe you about the big things? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's a really great point, too, about that. I'm getting so personal. Sorry, guys. Good. But um, with my first marriage that I did wrong was I was not transparent enough with him from the very beginning. So I was just trying to be like a good soldier and have a positive attitude and there were things that we really should have addressed in our marriage and I did it five years into the marriage and by then it was too late. He wasn't, Patterns had already been set. He wasn't interested in making any changes and so and um, didn't like the way I was mm -hmm. and so like we figured it out five years into it which was good and you know we've both moved on to very happy relationships but i wish that i would have been totally 100 percent honest from the beginning and i totally own that as you know my failing so i love that that's really great what is one of the patterns that you see that will again this is a pattern that will destroy mm -hmm. what other mm -hmm. pattern do you see that destroys emotional and physical infidelity mm. it's very very difficult to overcome is it possible once Maybe, depending on the character of the two people. A judge once explained to me that trust is like a little piggy bank. The mm -hmm. old porcelain ones used to mm -hmm. put coins in. Every time you tell someone the truth, you get to make a small deposit. But the first time you lie to them, you drop it over a concrete floor and it shatters. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing more shattering than infidelity. Mm -hmm. So the, how do you pick up all those pieces? The person who was unfaithful literally has to be willing to get on the floor, find every piece that bounced onto the refrigerator, into the couch, everywhere else, mm -hmm. and put them back together, one at a time. And literally the only thing they have the right to expect from their spouse, until that's done, is their own fidelity. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. They don't say, well, I've, I've been good, I've been faithful for three months, you should be over it. Mm -hmm. No, mm. it's not the way it works. So Stan, how can our viewers get more information about the Relationship Magic Academy? The website is www.relationshipmagicacademy. Okay. We have a course called the Diamond Relationship Formula that teaches a mathematical formula. Okay, say this real quick as we go out because I wanted to talk about this. Okay. okay, to measure the quality of a relationship as it stands and measure its change over time. And the book, Unveiled Secrets to a Marriage That Lasts Forever, is available on Amazon. Excellent. Okay, and, and give and just as a kind of a teaser, what's the what's the code? What's the formula? The formula is Q R equals Q Q C C. And that is the secret to a long and happy sustaining marriage. Okay. Okay. Go find out what all that means. <laughs> At Relationship Academy Relationship Magic Academy dot com. Stan, thank Perfect. you so much for being with us today. This was thank so you. fun. Thank, thank you, Lauren. It's a pleasure. It was great to see you.
We'll be right back. Whoa. 